The South African A Shore Angling Championships is the most prestigious event in South Africa. At this event, all your provincial provinces compete against each other and all the top anglers or the top ranked anglers within the provinces compete against each other. What makes this tournament so exciting is the fact that you're actually doing a team sport and an individual sport at the same time. So, so you've got this whole big team camaraderie where we all work together as a province to beat other provinces. But then as an individual, you can end up making invitational teams, the Springbok side or the president side. So it's a team sport with a side to it where you actually have individual results as well. The 2019 South African A Shore Angling Championships is Bulan to the host this year and they've selected the Straits by area for us to fish. So in total we've got 12 provinces across South Africa taking part with a total number of 144 anglers, 12 anglers per team, um, excluding your management. Then you'll have a team manager, a guide and a coach that goes with each team. My name is Pierre Dupree, um, I'm the president of Sasa. Obviously we are the uh, role players in uh, South African shore angling, uh, in the sense that we the custodians of the pro tier. It's a feeling that you cannot describe to somebody to put on a springbok blazer, be a pro tier blazer, he's the best angler and the best in his sport. He can stand up to any other pro tier, um, rugby player, soccer player, he's the best in South Africa in his sport. There, there's certain structures in place uh, regarding bait issue and times of fishing that is thrashed through uh, before the, uh, the meetings take place. Virtually the areas are discussed, the conditions and uh, uh, then it goes to a vote uh, to see where and when uh, and the times, the preferable times being in low tide, pushing into high tide um, and then uh, it's a structured organisation that we, uh, we then fish in. The area they wanted a few different structures which management could use to target certain species. So the Mont area is literally a river mouth and there's a lot of big shallow sandbanks and we know that the lesser sand sharks love that area. Um, certain years cob can come there and then species like diamonds and hammerhead sharks. So that was obviously a big attraction to management and they, all of the management put some anglers there and those anglers who were put there would be your type of angler that was very good at scratching, um, fast working angler and could rack up the numbers. So the point system works as follow, for a non-edible fish you get one point per kilo, so if a fish is one kilo you get one point, and for an edible fish you get two points per kilo, so if it's a one kilo fish you'll get two points for it. There are size limits um, to, to different species, so your edible fish have to weigh 500 grams and up to qualify, and your non-edibles have to weigh a kilo and up to qualify. When it comes to measuring a fish, there are way marshals on the beach. Um, they are placed along the beach where the, in the, within the area the anglers fish. And just a, a quick way of how the rules work. You land a fish, you take your fish to a way marshal with your way card. They measure it. They got two little sticks they um, stick into the sand, move the fish away, take the tape, measure the fish. You've got to witness it. Um, 
the way Marshall will sign your card, you make sure that he signs it correctly, and only after your fish, after your card's been signed by the way official and you've agreed that everything's correct, you place your fish back in the water, and only after that can you cast again and try and catch another fish. At the end of the day, that scratching fish, one lesser, one shad, one little cob, could mean the difference between a team coming first, second or third. So those little scratchy fish are very important in the tournament and I'm sure every team management knows it and they've got their little group of guys that are there to scratch and get the ball ticking over. As we walked along the beach, we found an area where there's a big deep trough with a solid bank at the back and there were some of your taller, stronger anglers placed in this area. Um, management obviously knew that these anglers had the ability to cast far enough to get over that bank. So we had the group of guys standing there, among them was AJ the Beer and he could place the bait just, just over the bank, on the edge of the bank. At the A lot of small fish coming out, but AJ persists with a bigger bait and he's got a nice little hammer. When you're fishing the South African Championships, speed plays a very important role. The speed at which you put your bait on, the speed at which you land a fish, the speed at which you move in between casts, etc., etc., getting your fish back in the water. So being fit is very important for the tournament. And at the end of the day, if you, if you can move fast and do everything fast, you gain a lot more time in the water above anglers that are slow and they can't get back in the water so quick. Vimpy Kirsten from Boerland is one of those big, strong, tall guys and he was fishing with AJ on this bank. We had to put a very long throw to get over the bank and he also capitalized on the situation and ended up hooking to a very nice amid shark.
we, we're here at the Mont Stress Bar, obviously fishing, fishing the Nationals. Um, this morning we obviously arrived to some pretty clean water. Um, the water is pretty warm as well, so it's it's uh, not ideal conditions, but uh, with it being nice and flat, it doesn't make it unfishable at all. So um, we've seen a few hammers come out. The sand sharks have, have been pretty wild. It seems like the guys have capitalized on that and they're turning off now with the tides starting to push. Uh, so hopefully a couple bigger fish will come through. Um, there have been one or two diamonds landed already. Um, I've heard of one or two other fish lost. But um, with the pushing tide, we should have a bit more fun. Let's hope that this cloud behind us doesn't come and destroy us though. Well, in general, when there's a, a, we call it a smash, what we mean by smash, when there's a lot of fish in one small area, it's absolute chaos. Uh, you've got anglers running in all directions, shouting for management, shouting for way marshals, shouting at other anglers, come help them measure the fish. So it gets a bit hectic, and that's where you've got to really just try and keep yourself cool and calm and produce the goods within that hectic situation. Neil van der Linde from Eastern Province was with in the mix and in the smash with the guys, um, enjoying catching those hammerhead sharks. And then Wesley Rapson, representing Malanga this year, was also there catching a few nice hammerheads. Wesley Rapson had a very good day. He was fishing well. It's the first time in many years he's actually taken part in the South African Championships and I could see he's really enjoyed it to be back doing what he's good at. And he ended up having a brilliant day catching quite a lot of good fish.
Well, as the tide changes, obviously the strategy of what species you're going to target changes because sandbanks start disappearing in certain areas, holes fill up, they get deeper. So that's where management comes in and they've pre-thought of what they want to do with the anglers when the tide pushes. So towards the mouth or the, the mont, which is the mouth of the river, there's a big flat shallow bank, which on low tide you literally just walked out on dry sand. But with the push of the tide, that bank started filling up and it became a wading bank. And management started putting their strong waders on this bank. Um, wading is a very, very big part of what selectors look for when they pick teams. Strong waders um, are always very important in teams and guys who can wade deep, stand in deep water and cast far. So we had this group of anglers on this wading bank now, which is almost turning into a bank that you swim to, um, mainly your, your strong casters, strong waders, and they got stuck into some of those hammerhead sharks and lesser sand sharks that were up in the deep on a deeper sand bank. Well, it's the last half an hour of the day. Tides fit up nicely, and there's a few guys waiting on a bank here. One of the few waiting banks on the coast, and they're getting into some nicer fish. Looks like decent hammers. So the tall boys with the long throws are bending and getting some nice bites. Well, day one of the tournament, in general, wasn't a very bad start to the tournament. There was a lot of small fish around. The odd bigger bonus fish, uh, which would generally be the diamond ray for the day. Um, those hammerhead sharks were exciting to catch, good points. A lot of fish caught. Most anglers got on the board and got their motivation up for the next day. So in all, day one was a good day. Well, it was quite a uh, busy day today, there was lots of bites, um, mostly um, lesser sand sharks in the area I was fishing, but towards the end there was a few decent sized hammers that uh, was caught. No doubt the mouth on the one side, they got quite a, quite a good number of hammers and some nice ones as well. So it was a bit of a mix of a day, um, you're either fishing for hammers basically or you're fishing for lesser sand sharks, so it was an interesting day. Now we haven't checked the updates. Um, today at all but um, it looks like Thursday Friday towards the end of this week um, the weather is going to change so the first couple of days of the tournaments was probably going to be the most important. Eh? Some of the good fish that we caught for the day was Tian Swanapul from Boerland got a very nice diamond ray, Linton Premel from Zuland got a very nice hammerhead shark, Adrian van Yeden from Free State got a very nice diamond of 170 centimeters Greg Sutherland from KZN had a very good day and ended up with some nice hammerhead sharks and a bronze whaler. Russell Barkley from Border got a very nice hammerhead shark. Peter Miller ended up with a nice hammerhead. Wesley Rinken from Zuland also got a nice hammer. Jakob Fuljun 
from Western Province with the MH shark. Henning Finte from Boerland with a nice diamond ray and the MH shark. Blaine Wearing from KZN also got some nice fish and here's him with a nice MH shark. Carl Edwards from Border landed a very nice MH shark. Stefan LaRue from Boerland with a nice diamond ray. Well, after day one, the top five teams' scores were as follow. In fifth place was Zululand on 343.75 points. Uh, Boerland was lying fourth with 369.28 points. KZN was lying in third place with 425.01 points. Border was lying in second place with 446.18 points. And then the top team for the day was Eden or Southern Cape on 468.59 points. Well, that's the points for, the, for day one. Um, it's always a nice psychological advantage to know your team's right at the top there. You're doing well, your anger's on fire. And in general, when you start off well, you must work and end off well. So although it's day one, it's nice to have a good start and prepare yourself mentally for what's coming for the rest of the tournament.